I got this scrap pieces of wood from Facebook Marketplace for absolutely nothing, so let's make a $0 project by turning those scraps into a mid-century modern pet bed. Let's go. Since each piece was of varying lengths and not really straight, I just took my table saw and sliced off each side so that when I glued them together, they would join properly. So this is just slicing and dicing. Also, fun fact, this is practically my first time using this table saw, so didn't cut a finger. Anyhow, then I took my miter saw and sliced off all the edges just so that it would also line up properly. Then it's just measuring and marking everywhere where I needed to cut. I wanted this to be 23 inches long for the base of the bed. And now I'm just marking, making sure that this is how I wanted the bed to look like. And sorry for it not being in focus. I totally did not even realize this until after I filmed it. Sorry. And now it's time to glue up the pieces. I just lined them up on my clamps, used Gorilla Glue, which is my favorite, and glued it up. I do not have a brush, or I do somewhere around the house, I don't know, but I just used my fingers and clamped it shut. I really like Gorilla Glue because when it dries, it doesn't turn yellow, it remains kind of a clearishy white color. I don't know, it just doesn't yellow the wood, which I really enjoy. And after letting it dry for about 20 to 30 minutes, it's good to go. And now it's gluing up the back, um, the back panels and the side panels along with glue as well. I also don't own a lot of clamps and so that's why it's taking me a lot longer to do this. I went back and bought more clamps because seriously and honestly, you can never have too many clamps, seriously. Also, I did not use any other types of joinery, like biscuit joints or dominoes or whatnot, because honestly, wood glue, when glued on long grain to long grain, it creates a stronger bond than the wood itself, so there's no need. Plus, this is just a tiny bed, so there's no need for me to have extra support because the glue will do most of the support. Okay, now that all the pieces are glued up, I'm just marking and cutting off the excess on the edge where it's not fully aligned so that it will be all straight. Do that to both sides and you've got a really nice slab. Now on to sanding. So much sanding. And here I'm just marking to make sure that the back panel is also aligned with the bottom panel of the bed. And it is, so now everything fits. And do the same for the sides as well. I have a pocket hole jig from Craig Tools and I love it. So I decided to use pocket hole joints to connect the side panels to the bottom panel. But in reality, since I'm connecting the long grain to the long grain, you don't technically need to do this. If you want to do this at home and you're connecting the long grain to long grain, wood glue is sufficient enough. And if you are unsure of that still, you could just do tiny little, like if you have a brad nailer, just nail it in place. Because wood glue, again, on long grain to long grain, it is a stronger bond than the wood itself. I, since I have a pocket hole joint, I, or a pocket hole jig, I decided to use this, but I think next time when I make one, I will probably just use glue because it's a lot easier and it makes it for such a cleaner finish on the outside. Also because this whole ordeal of trying to align everything correctly was such a hassle and again, totally unnecessary because now I have all those holes in the back and on the sides and I had to fill it in with filler and it just does not look pretty as an end result. Um, next time I try this, I think I want to do a miter cut on both ends and then again, only use wood glue and then finish nail it in place.
Now it's time to do the tapered legs. I really wanted tapered legs to give it more of that Scandinavian, mid-century modern feel. So since I still had scrap wood left over, I decided to just sketch out how I wanted it to look and then cut from there. I just got this stand to put my miter saw on and it's been a lifesaver. And I love how you can raise the sides to make sure that everything's even. Bam, even. Anyhow. Now I'm just cutting off the ends to make sure that it's a nice 90 degree finish. And then I moved over the, um, the slider so that it would be at a 22 and a half degree angle because that's how I wanted it to be for the taper. Then I chopped that off using some little, not clamps, but just a little stop holder so I knew that I wasn't gonna go over and make sure that each cut would be the same. I marked it with a pencil on my miter saw so that I always knew where to align. And then I cut off the ends and now I've got all these pretty tapered legs. The apron for the legs was one inch wide so I'm just taking my table saw again and doing one inch wide strips. And yes, that is a feather duster that I use to dust off my table saw when I'm done. And now I'm just using my ruler and my square to try and figure out where I wanted my legs to be placed. So I believe I did two and three quarters of an inch from the inside, or not from the inside, from the outside in so that it was all evenly placed. And I just wanted to make sure that everything was square and straight and marking to make sure that when I put the legs in that I knew how long to cut my aprons. Now that the aprons are finally cut and put into place, I then took my pencil and marked where exactly I wanted the pocket hole screws to go to join the legs to the aprons. Then I used again my pocket hole jig to create the pocket holes so that I could attach these together. Screwing them together was a little more difficult. I used a little bit of glue on both ends and then clamped it together and then used my screwdriver to attach them together. Uh, then I did the same for the other side and for the longer sides and then they were done. Then I took a little bit of wood filler and filled in the tiny little gaps on the insides and just shoved that in and then waited for it to dry and then sanded it down. Next up was plugging up the pocket holes. So I use these plugs that Craig Jig offers. You just take some glue and then slip the little discs in. Honestly, I am not a fan of them. Um, I think I would have probably preferred to use dowels instead. These were a little difficult to get in and they wouldn't want to go in all the way. And since I'm going to be sanding each one down anyways, like so, I think I would have just preferred to use dowels. But they came off. It's pretty soft because it's, I think it's made out of beach wood so they cut off pretty easily and then I just used a pull saw and then I took my sander and sanded everything down so that it was smooth and flush. Now it's time to stain the entire pet bed. I'm using this stain that I got a long time ago from a friend. Um, it's Varda from Ikea actually. And it's this nice 
medium brown, like a warm medium brown that matches the mid-century modern George Nelson Omni wall unit I have in my home. So I love this color. And since I had 12 bottles of it for free from a girlfriend because they were discontinuing it, I use this for practically everything. And I still have 11 bottles and I got this in 2012. <laughs> Now I'm gluing the legs to the base. I decided to only use glue. First, I did sizing where you glue the end cuts first and let that sort of dry. So while I was letting that dry, I was putting glue on the long grain cuts and then adding more glue to the end cuts so that any glue that was absorbed, I could add more glue so that everything was a little even. And that's because end grain cuts tend to soak up glue like a sponge. So you have to do sizing where you kind of create a little barrier and then add the glue. Now I'm just clamping everything down so that it will create that strong bond on those long grain and end grain, hopefully. Now I'm going through my scrap bin of scrap fabrics to pick which fabric I want to make the bedding and the pillowcase. And this is what I picked. These scraps are actually from Kay Dion Designs. She had a huge bag of scrap fabrics that she was gonna get rid of and I asked if I could have them and she did. And now I love them because they've made this beautiful bedding and cute fun little pillow for this pet bed. Also, I did not have any batting or any pillow stuffing. So I took some soft old fabric also that I had laying around and used that as stuffing material for the pet bedding and then scrap cut fabrics from when I was sewing from before and used that to stuff the inside of this pillow. And there you go. Zero dollar pet project. I love it. I think it came out so great. I love the color. I love the legs and it was such a really great and easy project to do. And look at my little cat. Anyhow, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you love it, then hit that subscribe button or not, whatever you do you. But thank you again for watching and hope to see you soon. Bye.